starting to record now and then I'm going to let people in. Thanks, Tim. Good afternoon and welcome to this CIHT webinar. Still a few people coming in. Um, today's webinar is going to tell you about the journey that you can take to becoming a chartered manager, what that could look like. And I'm delighted that we've been able to run this for you today together with the Chartered Management Institute. So I'm Kat Kumal, I'm Head of Education and Professional Development at CIHT and I'm joined today by Karen Nichols, who is the Chartered Programme Manager at the Chartered Management Institute and she's going to be our main speaker today, who's going to tell you about the route to becoming a Chartered Manager. I'm also supported today by my colleague John Hall, who will be helping with your questions. In the background you'll see at the top of your screen there is a Q&A um button that you can click on if you click on that it will bring up a box where you can type any questions and there'll be um time for putting questions to to karen at the end as well so please do um put your questions in there as as you think of them and then just before i hand over to karen i think it's always good to think about why you might want to to do something like this so i wanted to show you this quote from um, another CIHT member who is a chartered engineer and also a chartered manager. Um, so Heidi says, I applied for chartered manager qualification to mark a milestone in my career as an accomplished project manager, as well as self-recognition of my management skills. The process in obtaining the qualification is straightforward and the qualification has added real value to my career, but it does require commitment and motivation to write up a good submission. So it's it's just a great opportunity to get recognition for those leadership and management skills. And hopefully Karen is now going to be able to explain that it how it is straightforward, but that you do need a little bit of, of commitment to achieve it. So I'm just going to hand over to Karen now. Thank you so much, Kat. So um Hello everybody, good afternoon. I'm really pleased to be joining you today and have the opportunity to talk to everybody about Chartered Manager. We've got quite a bit of ground to cover, um, I think up until one o'clock. So um, what I'm gonna be looking at going through with you today and giving a bit more of an explanation, opportunity to um, answer any questions you may have, as Kat said, if you want to pop those into the Q&A area, we'll pick those up at the end. Um, but essentially I'm going to be looking at a bit of an introduction about what Chartered Manager is. I'm going to be talking a little bit about the partnership opportunity that's available um, to CIHT members around Chartered Manager. And I'll also be talking about the process um, about what the application form looks like, what it is we're actually asking you to put forward, how that will go forward for assessment, what assessment will look like. Um, so, as I say, quite a bit of um, ground to cover. And I'm absolutely sure that um, on completion of the session today, that CIHT will be uh, sharing the slides and the recording around everybody so that you'll have a chance to revisit um, and, and look at detail um, of those particular sections I'm about to cover. So if we can move on to the next slide. So if we talk about Chartered Manager and what it is, um, Chartered Manager is a professional award or designation. Um, I was looking at what a definition of chartered actually means, and it talks about it being someone who's gained a specific level of skill or competence in their field of work. And for chartered manager, our field of work focuses on management and leadership, and that absolutely is true for the CMI. So chartered manager is an opportunity to offer specific recognition of management and leadership skills, of how they applied, of what they deliver for the business. So what it is that you do, how you make a difference to the positive outcomes for your business. Um, it is underpinned as an award, it is underpinned by the CMI's professional standard framework. Um, so our assessment for Chartered Manager explores how you have met and potentially exceeded that standard. And you can see on the right hand side of the screen here, there's a there's a wheel that identifies what the different areas of the professional standard are. So when we look at 
assessment for chartered manager when we look at what we want to understand about you about what you do how you use your skills that's primarily what you're being assessed on it's about your skills it's about how you apply them i'm talking management and leadership skills here look to that it's also about what achievements have you delivered for your business and how have you done that through the application of your management and leadership skills it's about what you personally deliver for your business and through the application, I'm going to come on to that in a, in a little while, um, you'll be encouraged to bring the examples of how you have done that to life into your own application. So this becomes an exploration um, of really how you work as a manager and leader alongside your technical expertise. Um, and in terms of how you're able to progress with Chartered Manager, you aren't signing up to a registration or an extended registration period. It's a reflective process. So you decide when is the right point to move forward with Chartered Manager. And at the point you register, you're then completing an application which is prompting you to look back over recent achievement. So generally, we're talking about activity results that you've delivered over the last 18 months. So it's a reflective process at that point. If we move on to the next slide, let's just talk very briefly about the partnership. So um, CIHT and um, CMI, Chartered Management Institute, we've actually had a partnership in place for a number of years and around Chartered Managers specifically. But in relatively recent time, we've updated our assessment approach for Chartered Manager. So we wanted to bring that updated information across to everybody. Um, but to identify that the partnership we've got in place is open to uh, members of CM CIHT who are chartered engineers, incorporated engineers or transport planning professionals with at least five years management experience. In going forward for chartered manager, you are also coming into membership with CMI. So it becomes something of an extended membership offer. Um, in joining us, you'll get access to all of CMI's membership benefits and resources, which obviously are focused on management and leadership but they are intended um, to be there to help anybody who's got a management and leadership role in their day-to-day -day activities so it can absolutely sit alongside and complement the membership that you have with the CIHT um, and ultimately I suppose chartered manager or, or as our individual chartership will also then give you recognition across the whole skills base so it can complement your technical expertise. So if we look at the next slide and look at the potential value of Chartered Manager. Um, so you may be asking, what will the impact be on me if I go ahead with Chartered? You know, why would I want to? Kat shared that quote right up at the start of, of this webinar, which was somebody who had gone through the process and was identifying what it had meant for her personally and why she had chosen to go ahead. Um, Alongside that, we do have um, some stats from some detailed research that, that CMI commissioned through Oxford Economics. Um, this was a survey of people who had gone through the process to achieve award um, and asking them what they felt they had gained from that particular experience. What is it that had prompted them to become chartered and actually what have they drawn from it? Um, a huge factor that comes through here is about self-confidence and self-awareness. Um, it's an interesting area. We know that lots of people sometimes they can struggle with imposter syndrome or perhaps confidence in the workplace has taken a hit um, or not having the time to reflect on what we achieve and how that each time we have a successful project or a successful piece of work, it's completed and we move on to the next thing. So this idea of taking time to celebrate, but particularly to reflect on how are we applying our management and leadership skills? What are they delivering for the business? What difference are we each making as an individual? Actually being able to identify that, to articulate that, it's something that you can replicate in the future. And that can only add to self-awareness and self-confidence. So absolutely, this is about a reflective process. I think I would also say that we do get feedback from candidates anecdotally when they have gone through the process. Um, and for many, they identify that perhaps it's made them a better or a more effective manager by being able to isolate and articulate what makes you effective. But in that reflective process, as I said, it's helping to boost confidence and self-awareness. 
um, and that it's results focused. So it's very much about your ability to link your skills to deliverables. So what is delivering positive outcome, outcome for both you and for your business? So in terms of what Chartered Manager looks like as an assessment process, if we move to the next slide, Essentially, we've identified here that there are four steps that you're looking to complete. If you want to go ahead with Chartered Manager, the start point would be to contact uh, the Chartered Manager team here at the CMI. So that's my team um, to get, first of all, your membership of CMI in place. And that's at a much discounted rate as part of this partnership offer. Also to confirm your CIHT membership number and your chartership as, as either a chartered engineer, incorporated engineer or transport planning professional. Um, as part of membership, I'm going to talk about this in a moment. As part of membership, you're going to have access to a management diagnostic. And that's something that we absolutely encourage any candidates for Chartered Manager to complete as a first step. So if you're applying and you're registering, we get everything set up into our systems. We share the application with you so that you're able then to move forward. So the next step then is all about the submission itself. So this is an application form, a series of questions for you to answer. I'm going to go into a little bit more detail about that shortly and I'll cover each section and, and explain what we're looking for. But that application form in being um, identified across four key areas is an opportunity for you to complete it. You could do it in one go if you want it. You could take that and complete each question individually. It doesn't have to be um, drafted in one sitting. So if this is about how and where you find time to be able to um, look at each question, they can be completed in the, the order in which they're presented in the application, but you can move around as well. So um, what we're wanting to do is give an application that has a logical and clear links from one section to the other, but absolutely is something that can be picked up, part of it completed, saved, put down and then revisited. Um, it very much can be um, completed in bite sized chunks, if you like. So once you have drafted your application, and you're also asked to put uh, provide a sponsorship letter alongside. This is giving us, um, for part of the assessment process, an added perspective of how you use your management and leadership skills and how you apply them. Um, and what we ask is that the person you put forward as a sponsor is somebody that's in seniority to you within your organisation, somebody that you work closely with, so they're able to um, give their thoughts and their feedback on how you work against the top level areas of the professional standard, the wheel that was on the previous slide. What you do is submit that application through to us along with your sponsor letter. That's going to be assigned out to an assessor. The assessor is going to do a bit of a review. They're looking to understand the information you've provided, the extent to which that, which that is meeting the criteria. And I will stress at this point within our application form, the assessment criteria are clearly identified. So against each question, if there are criteria there that articulates what is it we're looking to understand about you, they are front and centre. They're there for you to see so that you know what we're looking for. The assessor has obviously that same information so they know what they need to explore and to probe. So in reviewing your written application, they're making a decision. They're taking notes. They're thinking about to what degree have the responses you've already provided in writing, to what degree are they meeting the criteria that we have? Um, or what might they want to probe against each of the sections of the application? And then what the assessor will do is organise a professional discussion with you. Now that's completed online, um, usually about an hour long, um, and it's an opportunity for you to bring your application to life. So that's what the assessor has been using to review and decide what, how much information have you already given, what more needs to be explored, but it is absolutely your opportunity to then drill down into detail. The assessor is going to be looking for you to provide that information to them. Um, so absolutely, it's focused on you. Um, they're not going to bring in questions or anything that you wouldn't expect. That professional discussion is based on your application. You can absolutely have the application with you whilst you're completing the professional discussion itself. And I guess importantly, what the assessor is going to look for is a, a day and a time to have that professional discussion that's going to suit you both. Um, that could be within working hours. It might be that it's outside of, uh, if you like, the standard office hours or the standard working day. That's something that you can agree with your assessor. So 
once the assessor has completed that professional discussion, it then moves on to this final element, which is all about the outcome or the results. So the assessor essentially is going to be um, writing up their assessment notes and commentary. They're going to be providing through to my team the recommended result. So what do they think should happen? Should you be awarded chartered manager? That would go through a moderation process with my team and then the result would be confirmed through to you. So a relatively simple and straightforward overarching process that we've got in place here. So if you move on to the next slide, I want to just talk briefly about the management diagnostic. So as I've said, this is something that is available once we have your membership set up and in place. Now, the diagnostic is a self assessment questionnaire. There are three levels for junior manager, middle manager, senior manager, and we would be looking and encouraging you to complete the middle manager diagnostic or the senior manager diagnostic if you are, um, you know, perhaps in a, a strategic role within your organisation. So as a self-assessment questionnaire, it's simply a series of questions that are based on our professional standard and you're being asked to provide answers to each question that's about your knowledge and your experience. You're basically being asked against a series of statements to grade yourself from one to five, where one is something you feel is not um, perhaps an area that you're currently involved in. And five is where it's something you feel you are wholly competent in relation to that particular statement. You go through um, the, the questionnaire, through the diagnostic itself. And once you've done, you'll receive a fully personalised, well, a learning plan, primarily. Um, and and that will include links across to various resources um, within the CMI website and that are part of the benefits that members are able to use. So the idea is that if there are key areas of strength, that, that resulting report will have identified them. If there are opportunities for development, likewise, that will be identified to you so that you have an opportunity to look at perhaps some of those skills gaps. Um, but perhaps most importantly, as you're going through that questionnaire, as you're looking at each statement and grading yourself, if you were to think about what example do you have of how you demonstrate that particular statement within the way that you work, note those examples to one side because they can absolutely help you when you're looking to put your application together. Um, those examples will be things that we would be asking you to provide into the application as you're completing it. Um, so a definite opportunity where the diagnostic can absolutely support. I'd also say within the application, and I'll come on to that again in a moment, um, but there is something there around future plans for CPD. So again, it could be that from the diagnostic, you might well identify areas that you're going to look to develop in the next 12 months, and they also can be absolutely pulled into the application itself. So let's move on to the next slide. And I now want to talk in a bit more detail about the application itself. So when somebody registers for a chartered manager, my team will provide that application through to you. Um, essentially, as an application, it's a series of questions for you to answer. As I've said already, if there are assessment or past criteria against each area, they will be clearly laid out so you can see what they look like. There is also a, a support pack that we have put together. And again, that can be shared across with you. And that's looking to give you some additional thoughts on the type of detail that you could look to capture in your application. But part one of the application of your submission this is very much about, well, eligibility, but really the backstory, the background to you, to your role, to your career story. So as part of the submission process, you need to provide that sponsor letter. As I've mentioned before, this is a senior manager or leader, somebody that you report into that works directly with you, that can provide a perspective um, on how you work, how you apply your skills. But this section is also about your current role, and potentially your management and leadership journey through roles going back up to five years. The key here is to be specific. It's about helping us and ultimately the assessor because they will not know you. So this is setting a scene for them. It will help us to understand your previous responsibilities through that lens of management and leadership. I would also say that voluntary experience can also be included here. So we do sometimes find that we have candidates who come forward who have a full time day job, um, but perhaps are involved in um, clubs or um, 
outside of the workplace, activities, organisations where they are applying their management and leadership skills in some way. So perhaps they're part of a committee of something. Um, I know an example might be, for instance, school governors is something we've seen people come through where actually your skills are still, your management and leadership skills are still being used and it might be outside of the day job and that is fine. You can bring that voluntary experience into this as well and articulate it into this area. So section one, very much about building a picture of you, of the roles that you complete, um, your current role, previous roles up to five years, um, your areas of responsibility and authority and so on. If we move on to the next slide, then part two of the application is focusing on who you are as a manager and leader. The first question that you're going to be asked to think about and to provide a response to it asks you to look at what does chartered manager status mean to you? So a short personal statement on why you want to apply and why now. Um, it could also be about what impact do you hope? What do you hope that you are going to gain by completing chartered manager? What do you hope the impact might be on you, on your role, maybe on your team? If you've got a team, that, if you've got um, a, a team of people who report into to you, uh, but also on your organisation. So. Why will Chartered Manager be significant to you? Part two, if you like, of this particular section, the second element here is focusing on your role as an ethical and inclusive leader, which is central to the CMI professional standard. The way that we do this within the application is um, we have a series of five statements which you can see bulleted here. What we ask you to do within the application against each of those um, statements against each of those areas to grade yourself and we're asking you to think about how confident are you in relation to the statement how competent do you feel you are so again give us some scoring we aren't looking for perfection here we're looking for some honest reflection if you like um, and it isn't that if you were to score yourself slightly lower against one of these statements that wouldn't mean that you're not going to be successful in becoming a chartered manager it's an opportunity a point for further discussion could also be that it's something that you might identify as an area for development moving forward as a CPD opportunity within your application as well. So grading yourself in terms of confidence and competence, but then also bringing an example of how you demonstrate each of these values. So as I said, not perfection necessarily, but very much about honest reflection against each of these statements. What does that look like? How, how do you live that through the work that you complete? In terms of the next section, if we move on to the next slide, so part three, this is all about showcasing your success. So we've started to build this picture. Section one was all about you, the backstory. Section two was about who you are as a manager and leader. Now we want to know about what you actually deliver for your business. So how, um, how what you've achieved and how you have achieved it is going to make you an exceptional manager. This links back to three specific areas of the professional standard, which you can see bulleted here in terms of leading change and innovation, managing others and achieving results. What we're asking you to do with each of these areas is bring example. So for each criteria, I'd say think big. What are you most proud of having achieved over the last 18 months? And here we're talking about what you have delivered within that time scale. So if you've been working on a particular project, um, and maybe that goes back further than 18 months, that's not a problem, provided the results, the outcomes are focused in that timeline. So what are you most proud of? Could be your start point. It's important to think about not just what you did, but why you did it and why you did it in that particular way, your, what your approach has been and how has that had an impact on the outcome that you realised. So, for instance, if we're talking about managing others, perhaps we're this was focusing on an example about how you work with stakeholders. It wouldn't just be a statement that identifies that you work with stakeholders throughout the process, but it would be about perhaps um, how you worked with them to realise the achievement. Um, but did you do something different with there multiple stakeholder groups? Did you do something different or have a slightly flexed approach depending on who your stakeholders actually are? And why did you do that? And why did that then have an impact on the outcome? So it is looking quite broadly. Um, ultimately, this section is all about 
why you are a great manager. And we talk here about so the three areas we're asking for example. Now, it could be that you have a different example that you want to bring for each of these three areas. It could be a single example that identifies against all of them. That's not a problem. Um, so it's not that it has to be an exclusive example that you're bringing to each part of this application. If it's in relation to a particular project, there might be different aspects of it that you draw on that identify how you're using your skills, how you're applying them and what the difference is that you're realising for your business. So section three, showcasing your success. Section four, the final part of the application. This is all about you being an inspirational leader. This is really where I suppose a lot of the reflective evaluation actually comes into the application itself. So the first question you're asked is about reflective practice. This is an area that anecdotally, a lot of our people who are chartered, the people who've gone through the process, who've achieved the award, this is the part of the application that has the biggest impact for them moving forward. It won't be the reason why they decided to go forward for chartered manager, but in taking time to reflect, actually they see the value of how that helps them in the way they're gonna work moving forward. So here you're being asked to summarize, what does reflective practice mean to you and how do you um, put that into your schedule? What is it that you do? What approach do you take to reflect on um, the work that you're completing, the results that are being achieved? I suppose the takeaways you might have from that, so what works well? What are the positives? What are the things that you might want to replicate, perhaps that's in terms of, of approach or style? But it could also be what didn't work quite so well. Uh, what lessons maybe do you take from a particular activity that you've completed? And how will that influence you in the way that you work as a manager moving forward? So very much about where reflective practice fits into your activity. How do you celebrate your successes? How do you... Um, take those lessons and apply them to the way you work moving forward. So again, um, within this section, it's also then about CPD. So as well as identifying, you know, the reflective elements there, what does that then look like in terms of CPD plans? So it could be that you're going to revisit some of the sections of the application you've already completed. Are there elements there that you feel would be a good opportunity to develop for the next 12 months? then let's pop that into the CPD table that you'll find in the application form. Um, equally, if I go back to the management diagnostic tool, as I said, if you complete that before you complete your application for Chartered, it could well come back with some thoughts around what you might want to develop, how you uh, might want to um, build on your management and leadership skills moving forward. But it doesn't have to just be um, focused on that. If you have you know, performance appraisal, if that includes plans for development, you can incorporate those elements into the CPD area. It's a short table that you'll find in the application. Um, we are not looking for you to provide huge amounts of information. Simply, what does your plan look like? What specific activities are you intending to complete over the next 12 months? Um, what kind of timeline have you got? So when in the next 12 months with each of those things are you looking to actually complete? And what will success like look like? How will you know that you've set out, you've achieved what you wanted to achieve in terms of your development in that particular area? So absolutely, you know, we're looking to um, enable you to use what you've got in your application activity or plans that are outside of the chartered process, but also that management diagnostic if, if management diagnostic if it can be helpful to you in terms of CPD. The second element of this final section, we ask you to think about how you are a good role model um, and what does good practice look like in terms of being a role model as a manager and leader. Um, so it could be think about things like coaching and mentoring. Perhaps how do you keep up to date with research in your field and new managerial practices? How do you work with the people around you, with teams, with departments? How you work on your communication style? Um, it could be you might want to start by asking the people around you, what is it about you that perhaps they find inspiring? This is a really interesting question. This is not necessarily about you being a charismatic leader 
Um, it can be that you're a role model in relatively quiet ways that actually in your approach to your work, in how you work with the people around you, how you communicate them, if you have a team, in how you manage that team, how you inspire them, how you motivate them. It can be those things that come back and identify this is good practice in terms of trying to be a role model. Perhaps it's practicing what you preach. Um, and this is what we're asking you to think about. What makes you a good role model? And you've been asked to provide one example of how you've been a good role model. Um, and there's more information on that. As I said, there is a support pack that sits alongside the application, which can help you to explore further. What might that look like? What might that mean? Um, that's the application. Four sections, this series of questions for you to answer, as I've said, um, and I, I know from the quote from Heidi right at the start, yes, this requires time. We would say typically you might be looking up to 10 hours to put your application together. Might not take that long. It will vary from one person to the next. Um, but we try to give everything we can in terms of guidance to make it as straightforward as possible. And as I said previously, you do not need to complete this in a single sitting. So the application, you can absolutely look at a particular section, complete that, save it, come back to the next section a week later, a few days later, whatever that looks like. This is about where you find the time to put all of this description together. Um, but ultimately, that's what we're looking for, this completed application and a sponsor letter, which you will submit through to us. If we move on to the next slide, I just want to talk a little bit about what to expect from the professional discussion. So when I talked about the process, I identified that when you've completed your application, you submit it. That's where the um, an assessor is going to pick that up to move it forward into the assessment process. As I said, the assessor is going to be reviewing that application. They are going to be exploring, noting against the criteria, how much information have you provided? Are there any gaps or are there any areas or themes that they may want to explore further with you? So the professional discussion is very much your chance to talk about your experiences, to bring things to life. Um, Quite often, there's a large amount of information in writing, but when it comes to the professional discussion, perhaps the passion for what you do and what you've achieved comes across. Um, you know, it's your opportunity to own what that actually looks like and really what that delivered. It's not a, this. This isn't about a live reading of your submission um, with a Q and A or conversation. It's very much about. The assessor asking leading questions, probing questions to encourage you to to expand on the information that you've already provided. They may have some specific questions about elements that you've identified or written into your application specifically, and they'll prompt you if that's the case. But they may also ask you more generally about what life looks like for you as a manager and leader. Um, I guess what I would say to you, the call itself, so I've said that's going to be agreed for a day and a time that's mutually convenient for both you and the assessor. The call itself will typically last an hour. Um, we do allow up for a, one and a half hours if that's needed, um, but typically it's about an hour long. Before you have that professional discussion call, you know, take a look through your application. Think about, look at what the criteria are. Think about what message you might want to get across. I would also say if your application is based on recent activity, so if you're talking perhaps about a project um, and you've articulated what your successes were at the point you submitted, but if there's more information, if something more has developed, more successes have been realised since you actually submitted that application, and it might only be you know, a couple of weeks, but if there's something more that you could want to bring along, you absolutely can bring things bang up to date with the assessor, bring more elements into that professional discussion if you if you want to, if they're relevant to the application you've put forward. Um, in terms of lo the logistics of this, obviously the assessor, once they've agreed that day and time with you, will send, they're going to send an invite across to you because we will complete that professional discussion um, via a video call. Um, and that will be recorded for moderation purposes so that any um, checks on the assessment process and the approach by the assessor can be completed um, by my moderation team. So that's what the professional discussion looks like. So if we move on to the next slide, 
let's say you've achieved award. You'd get confirmation through from my team that that has happened, confirmation of your chartered award and a certificate and so on. But I guess then the next the next question for many people is, what do I need to do in order to retain my award? So um, essentially, that's what I'm looking to cover on this slide. Once you have achieved award, um, we ask you to keep your CMI membership up to date, to keep a log of your ongoing continuing professional development, your ongoing CPD. Um, you may keep that for, for instance, might be a requirement from the CIHT as part of your membership. We are not looking necessarily for you to keep a separate log. If this is something you're already capturing, that's great. Continue obviously to do that. If we approach you, we have a CPD sampling process. And if we approach you, then we ask you to provide that CPD log through to us for review. Um, it's a random sample that we look to do in any given 12 month period. Um, we exclude anybody awarded in the last 12 months. So you would not, it's, I guess it's a safeguard to some degree. It means that we can absolutely say categorically, if you were awarded, if you completed Chartered Manager and you were awarded Chartered Manager at the end of this week, you would not get a request for a CPD record a matter of weeks later. You will have at least 12 months grace before you ever fell into a, a CPD sampling for us. But if we do ask for it, then we ask you to provide that record through to us. What we are interested in understanding is what activities have you completed to develop your skills? And what have the outputs and the outcomes of those activities been? So we don't ask for a number of hours CPD. We want your evaluation. We want to understand for each activity, what value did you get from that? How has that helped you um, in terms of developing your skills further? Specifically, obviously, we're looking here really around management and leadership. So let's understand what that CPD record um, looks like. I would also say, and, and on the screen here, we've identified we are not prescriptive about the type of activity um, that you might undertake or that you might identify as CPD. So on the table on the right of the slide here, what you're going to see is all different types of um, activities that could be about developing your skills further. It could be about something that is planned, that is structured, um, for instance, you know, qualification or perhaps a conference or something along those lines. But it can equally be about activity development opportunity that actually is unplanned or that is informal in some way. So, for instance, networking, you know, a conversation with somebody might click a light bulb moment for you and you go and develop something as a result of that. And that can be relevant to provide back through to us. Um, no doubt in terms of opportunity for development, you know, your CMI membership alongside your membership with CIHT can absolutely support that. So in the same way that um, CIHT will organise events, so does CMI. So we have events around um, all topics for management and leadership. Those could be virtual events. They could be face to face. As part of your membership, you'd have access to them. You also have access to our online resource portal um, called Management Direct, which is all about providing you with videos, journal articles, ebooks, e-learning opportunities for you to develop your skills in terms of management and leadership. And again, that's something you'd be able to use. Essentially, that covers everything really that I wanted to talk about today. Um, as I said, you know, really moving any of these things forward is very much about um, reaching out to my team here at CMI. Um, if you have any questions, obviously we'll go through some, um, any that maybe have been logged uh, today as part of the webinar call. But equally, if there's anything that comes up after the session, we have a team email that you can um, drop us a message to. So that's cmgr at managers.org.uk. And if there's any questions that you have post this session that you just need to double check, please reach out to us and we'll be happy to, to cover those off with you. So I think at this point, I'm handing back to Kat. Thanks very much, Karen. And wow, what a great explanation of uh, how to go about becoming a chartered manager. I feel a lot clearer now on, on what that route and what journey would look like. So thank you very much for that. Um, in a moment, I'm going to open the floor to questions. So do please think about what you might want to ask Karen while we've got her here. Um, I know she said you can follow up afterwards, but if there is anything that you would like to ask now, it's a great opportunity to get an answer on the spot. 
and leading on quite nicely actually from sort of Karen's slide about CPD um, I, I just wanted to highlight that of course we have courses at CIHT on CIHT Learn that can help you with your leadership and management skills um, so CIHT Learn for anybody who's not aware is our online learning environment that you have access to as a member and a lot of the courses on there are free so um, and quite a lot of them are around leadership and management so there's a there's a really great range of leadership and management courses and um, there's a whole leadership skills bundle where you can work through sort of all aspects um, of leadership but you can also pick and choose if there are particular areas perhaps that you've identified through that diagnostic tool that that you want to to work on and this is just a, a screenshot of, of some of them here um, and of course you can also keep your CPD log on there as well so you can keep a record of CPD that you've done through CIHT Learn but also anything else that you've done um, whether that's formal or informal CPDs that you would have that that record for your application for maintaining your membership of CIHT and and CMI if that's the, the route that you choose to take um, so this is your chance then to ask questions. John, have we had any questions through? Um, yeah, we had one question in the Q&A. I'm just opening that up now. Um, this is, I have gained my chartership with another institution. Can I still apply through CIHT? If that's a question around a gaining chartered engineer or incorporated engineer through another um, institution, yes, if your membership is, is with CIHT, you absolutely can apply through the partnership. And in fact, I would encourage you to do that because it will ensure that that um, when we look to set up your membership record or register for you for chartered manager with the CMI, that we make sure that's reflected in the fees, so the membership fees, and um, they're much discounted. Rather than paying the full CMI membership fee, it's 50%. So absolutely, you know, identify your CIHT membership with um, through to us. The fact, you know, whether it's chartered engineer, incorporated engineer, um, help us understand that that's what you've got and we absolutely will make sure that we uh, register you via the partnership that you get the the discounted rate on the membership fees for CMI in order to move forward and of course there is um the opportunity if you wanted to to transfer your CN registration to CIHT as well and if that's something you want to explore and um, be happy to have that conversation with you about um how to do that I haven't got any other questions in the Q&A or the chat. Um, okay, so can I throw a few in that sometimes we get asked? That yes. might be useful. <laughs> One question that we um, are often asked is, do I need to manage people? Do I need to be a line manager in order to come forward for Chartered Manager? And categorically, no, you do not. Um, we will have an awful lot of people who come forward who might have a team that report directly into them. Um, so that can be relevant for some people, but for many, that isn't quite how, you know, the nature of their work um, kind of evolves. We do get quite a lot of people um, who come forward on the basis perhaps of, of working more in a project environment where actually the people that they are working with are perhaps cross-functional. They might be from across the business. Um, I know it's a, certainly a way that we work within CMI as well. Um, and in that instance, it won't necessarily be about having a team of people report to you so much as a team of people that you work with. Um, so it's not necessarily about needing to directly manage people. In that instance, you're talking very different skills there. You're talking about perhaps how you work, how you communicate, but how you influence people who don't actually directly report into you. So it's not necessary um, to have live management responsibility. I think also I would stress you don't have to have the word manager in your tie job title either necessarily. I think that's something else that, you know, sometimes we get people who, who ask that question. The range of job titles is is so vast. Um, you know, the areas of your responsibility, you're able to articulate that into the application form. And so the word manager does not necessarily have to be in your in your job title. It's about the remit, the, you know, the, the elements of responsibility and authority that you carry within your role that are key for us. Thank you. Um, just to add uh, something on of what um, Kat was uh, talking about um, in terms of CPD, um, you can use CIH to learn to 
create and complete a SWOT analysis as well. And this feeds back to what Karen was saying um, around you, you need to sort of be thinking about how you want to be planning your next CPD and your next uh, activities and, and how that supports your journey to become a chartered manager. So you can create a SWOT analysis on CHD Learn and that will help you to reflect on your strengths and weaknesses as well as identifying the opportunities and threats to your professional development. So a good SWOT will help you to um, understand and identify your professional development goals. And then you can also use CH to learn to create those goals. So you can add um, smart goals to your CH to learn um, uh, platform, and then you can actually use CH to learn to target the, the CPD courses that Kat was talking about to help you reach those goals. So it's really an all encompassing platform. Um, how long would it take, I, Karen? Sorry, I just have a question for Karen, but do you want to carry on? Yeah, no, go for it. I, I was going to say there's a couple more questions coming, but that, that sounds like you've got a good one there. No, 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 it's fine. I think the questions from the audience would be it would be better to, <laughs> to go for here. So absolutely. Thank you. Um, so there's a question about the sponsor. Do they need to be a chartered manager or chartered engineer themselves? No, not specifically. I mean, it could well be that it could be somebody if they're in seniority to you. And given the type of work that you might well be involved in, they may well be a chartered engineer, but that isn't a requirement. This is about a working relationship with you. So this is somebody who's in seniority to you within your own organisation and who knows you well enough to be able to give that perspective um, about how they see you working and applying your skills. So I think I mentioned it was the top level areas of our professional standard wheel. Um, essentially what they're being asked to do is to give a short statement about how they see you working in terms of personal effectiveness, in terms of interpersonal excellence and in terms of organisation performance. Um, so, again, we aren't looking for this in terms of the sponsor. We are not looking for this to be an onerous process for them. Um, we have developed, there is explanation within the support pack around the sponsor letter, but we have also developed a one pager. But if you want it, we can provide three for you to share with that sponsor, the person that you're looking to ask to provide the sponsor letter, which just gives them a little bit more of a direct note of what it is that we're looking to understand. But we're not looking for the, them to provide, you know, kind of a, a huge document or a really detailed um explanation of everything that you do we don't want this to be something but that's a burden for them it needs to be straightforward but it's helping our assessors to understand how other people see you working and that's really that's why it's about working relationship rather than it needing to be somebody who themselves is chartered in some specific way great thanks karen um, and then there's another question about whether you can use lecturing experience from university as part of your application. We ask for the understanding of what your roles have looked like over the last five years. So your current role, and it might be that your current role has spanned the entirety of that five years. Um, we don't really ask to go further back just so that, again, we're not making this an overly complicated application for you. We're not asking for a full CV. If you felt that there was something about your management and leadership journey, so how your career had progressed to the point where you are, and that we're having that experience as far as lecturing is concerned, that you want to be able to identify that that's part of what that journey has looked like, Yes, in theory, you could include it, but I would absolutely say, you know, if you're talking about something that's 15 years ago, that won't really come out through the remainder of the application because we are asking then about the specifics of how you are applying your, your skills, how you are making a difference for your business, specifically within the last 18 months, which is a much closer timeline. And I guess it would really be, what would you be bringing in terms of an explanation of work from 15 years ago that is directly relevant then to what you're going to articulate about recent activity. Um, so we try and keep it shorter to make it a more um, straightforward process for you really in that first section. If you really feel there's something there that's important, pop it into the first section, but the rest focus is very much on recent activity and recent outcomes. Great, thank you. John, I, sorry, I stopped you from asking your question before. Do you want to ask it now? 
No, it's fine. I think um, I think Karen. Have I just answered great. it, John? Yes, you have. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Thanks, <laughs> I appreciate so that. Uh, yeah, no, I've just been um, just been thinking about other things that uh, other people may want to to ask, but um, I think there was another question that that came up, or have you just answered that? Can I bring in my previous? Is that the one you just answered? Yeah, in um, yeah. terms of from university lecturing. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, that's that's helpful. Thank you very much. No, that's, that's um, the one you just started. So. Yeah, I, I had a, a question, Karen. Is there any sort of particular deadlines or can you submit at, at any time throughout the year? Oh, that's a really good question, Kat. So, yeah, this is an open field, basically. Once somebody is registered, and um, we're really looking for you then to come forward for assessment, so submit your application within three months if you have been registered. But the time you take in order to put that together within that time scale is entirely up to you. You might get a few prompts from us, just keep it in your mind. Um, you know, there's a reason why I would say this is true for any candidate who comes forward. There's a reason why now was the time that you decided to register. So keep that momentum going. Um, you know, equally, um, you will find across on our website. And again, if you want to reach out to my team, we can provide through to you. We can provide the application. You can see it on our website before you register. So if you want to actually have sight of what that paperwork looks like, it's openly available. Um, it's not something that that's kind of restricted in terms of access to only being available once you register. No, that's not the case. So if you wanted, you could have hold of the application well before the point at which you want to actually register and move forward um, so that you can start to think about what are some of the things I would want to complete. I think the only like, limitation perhaps isn't quite the right word. When I talked about the management diagnostic, that's only available to you once you have registered and you've set up your CMI membership and registered for Chartered Manager with us. So the diagnostic is something that's driven by membership with CMI being current. Uh, but the application itself, all of that is openly available. So if you wanted to, to get that well ahead of time, start thinking about what are the different questions, what am I being asked? What would I want to bring along? That can absolutely be, be available. And actually you can download it as a Word document. So you could even start you know, capturing information into it if you really wanted to, again, ahead of, of the registration point. Okay, great. Has anybody got any more questions before we, we finish up for today? I think we've had lots of really, really useful information. I'll just give you a few seconds in case anyone wants to add anything. Thank you. So I think um, there's lots of actions people can take away um, if they want to sort of continue on this this journey after today. You've given people sort of quite clear direction about what the next steps could be. Um, if you've got any questions that we can help with in CIHT, please contact us at professional development at CIHT.org.uk. Um, we will send around the slides and um, I'll include the email address that Karen mentioned um, as part of that. I just want to make sure I, I get it right <laughs> before um, saying it out loud. But do just um, contact us if, if we can help you at all on this journey. And thank you, Karen, for an excellent presentation and John for looking after us and the questions. And thank you all for your time listening today. And I will end the webinar now. Thanks very much. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thanks, Karen. Thanks, Karen. Thanks.